Um, I wanted to get both Sergey and Vinny on because they have written this book. And this book is all about learning MySQL. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the first Hoss Talks Foss of the new year. Yes, it is 2022. And what we have today is a very special episode where we're going to be talking to two of Percona's authors and super awesome support engineers. Hey, everybody. Hey, Matt. How is everybody doing today? So today we've got Vinny and Sergey. Vinny, Sergey, how are you two? I'm good. First, Happy New Year for you too and everyone that's watching. It's a pleasure to be here talking with you. Yes. Yeah. Great yep. to have you on, Vinny. Sergey, this is this is not your first rodeo. You've been on before. Yep. It's not. It's really not. So happy new year, Matt. Happy new year, Vinny. Uh, it's nice to be here with you. And it's a pleasure talking to you as always. Yes. So um, I wanted to get both Sergey and Vinny on because they have written this book. And this book is all about learning MySQL. And uh, so if you haven't seen it, let me go ahead and I will um, go ahead and uh, I'm going to pull this up and I'll share the screen. Uh, you know, so it is available on um, Amazon and it's all about learning MySQL and how to get started and how to do it right and properly. Right. So, um, you know, Vinny and Sergey, um, what. Uh, what kind of compelled you to write this? Uh, I, I think that uh, the challenge of writing a book and, of course, having something that will be left after I, I retire. Like, I, I wrote a book in my life. I think it's one of life of the life achievements. Uh, and I, I was really enthusiastic to, to write about this on my sequel. It's something that I love to work with. So... I put two passions together. <laughs> yeah, and and Sergey, your 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 background is more Postgres than MySQL, right? Right, but that actually made it quite even better for me because uh, when I started writing this book, uh, well, I guess I knew a bit of MySQL already, but some things I had to research and just learn myself. And the learning MySQL here was from my side, kind of uh, an outline of my path to learning a database, to learning, first of all, just databases in general, because you can't write a database book without some generalities, uh, but also MySQL in particular. And yeah, second, I second Winnie, it was just, you know, uh, really a bucket list item for me to write a book sometime. It was... I knew it would be a huge project. I guess we will talk about that in a bit. But uh, when the opportunity came, uh, I grabbed onto it. Uh, and yeah, I never looked back. Um, and I guess I just, you know. Great. It's, 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 really, it's really interesting to me uh, in general just to be able to take complex, complicated topics and put them into words and just give them to audience in a form that is easy to come to consume and that's what i wanted to uh, do and that's what i like to do wonderful and here's the thing this is about learning mysql but is it just for beginners is it can, can someone who's been a mysql dba or used mysql for years learn something uh i think so uh the first chapters are are focused on the ones that doesn't know anything about MySQL, such like how do I install for the first time on different operating systems, Linux, Windows, Mac, whatever, because we know most developers like have their own database locally so they can do some tests. But the middle chapters and forward, I think they are focused on the DBA that is already performing tasks uh, like such as backups, optimization, tuning queries, tuning the MySQL overall performance. So I think it's a book for for everyone that is on MySQL ecosystem. Okay, so it covers the gamut of everything beginner to a bit more advanced. Yeah, I would say uh, that is a correct definition, right? So we start with really, really, really basic stuff and we 
also stuff with the like we do expect some database knowledge maybe but we will also help somebody who has never managed a database who has never worked with a database i guess so uh a few chapters of this book could be like like learning a database with mysql learning relational databases with mysql uh but yeah later on we go on into mysql specifics and for somebody who is already practicing and just wants to like up their ante or for somebody who is coming from a different database maybe uh definitely like the second half of the book is going to be quite interesting now sergey you had mentioned how difficult this was it was a challenge to write a book and i've heard and i've seen you know that it does take a lot of effort and a lot of work maybe tell us a little bit about that process for you yep so uh the main challenge uh I guess is to, I will, I will talk from my perspective, right? We will have Vinicius tell his perspective on his own. But, uh, how it came for me is I remember still it was May the 1st, 2020, right? Yeah. Not good with dates. And I just sat down and I picked a chapter at random. And it just so happened that the chapter was a chapter about backups. And I picked a part of the chapter and I started writing. And that went fine. <laughs> that went great. Like I, I wrote a part of the chapter on my first going in a few hours and I was like on top of the world. And then I realized that what I wrote will not like fit into the book because first of all, I wrote too much. And, uh, we, I then realized that just going ahead and writing stuff without thinking about it, without structure, without ideas of how you want to see it, it's not going to work. And I started approaching this from the other side. I started approaching this like I would maybe a software project or like anything. Because oh, wow. You, okay. you got to understand like the outlines. I started doing tasks for myself. I'm managing those like small pieces, breaking it down and uh, really thinking about this. Not like, you know, just I'm sitting and writing whatever I'm thinking. I started uh, sitting and thinking and then making it simpler for me because I knew what I wanted to say and I just needed to put the words there. And it also became an iterative process because that chapter about the backups, I finished it by June, but a year later, well, when we were closing the book, when we were finishing, like the last chapter I wrote was about monitoring. And uh, after that one, immediately after, I just went ahead and rewrote like 75% of the backups chapter. <laughs> And I did the same to a couple of others because, uh, this, this oh, process wow. of growing, of understanding how to write and understanding how to put the words out and understanding what is the books about and like giving this book a sort of a theme and, um, I don't know, vocabulary or like how we want to, how we want this book to look. Uh, it evolved. And so by the time I finished writing, I knew that, uh, with with the experience that I have, I wanted to go back in time, kinda, and redo parts of it. Well, that's what I did. Uh, we also had a healthy help from our reviewers, of course. I, I can can imagine, v Vinny. How was it for you? Like, you know, it, it it sounds like Sergey started one way, kind of flipped around, had to come back revisit. Was it similar process for you? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, I'm happy that Sergey joined me because alone. I realized it would be impossible to do it. And it was a roller caster of emotions. Like the, to the beginning, oh, I, I'm a writer. I will start writing a chapter. I started with uh, chapter number one, which is the, in the installation process. And I thought it was great, my chapter. And after the first reviewer, it was like trash. I got a very bad feedback. I had to come back and rewrite it. like. As Sergey said, I rewrote uh, 90, 80 percent of the chapter because it was not uh, good. Uh, but when you get out of this, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not too good, I'm not too bad, but I can do it. And then it's when I started uh, getting to the pace of writing chapters, reviewing, and working with. Uh, I think the biggest challenge was to, for me, was to get along how to write the book and, uh, and have a look from the audience perspective, like how a reader would uh, 
work with my books. So like that's uh, the main thing. And mm. I changed these a little, uh, a few times along the way. And is that more of like, you're really gearing this towards to you, as you follow the book, you get more advanced, right? So you start off, you're going to sit down, you're going to install. So we can go through the install process. Then the next step is, you know, how do you, you know, make sure that it's, uh, you know, configured um, and how do you design it, the, the database, and then walking through, okay, now it's designed and it's running. So how do you make sure it's backed up? And you you walk through the different steps that you have to from installation to kind of conception and then through that operations process. Right. but it really is not it's not that linear let's say because we do kick off with installation right we then go into the design um then we discuss uh basic primitive types and what you can do in mysql that that could be geared towards either somebody who has no never worked with databases before or somebody who's coming from other databases just want to know what is possible in mysql like why there is like int and then there is a digit in parentheses, which like surprised me when I came into my scale world. Why would you have like 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 a varcar? You know, you have varcar forty. Why do you have int eight? Right? Uh that's kind that kind of stuff. Then we go into more. Gonna you know, we continue with the theme that could be helpful for maybe not even a DBA, but for a developer like uh, transactions and blocking. And then again, we go into more advanced topics and. But there is how I want people to approach this book, how I kind of like myself to approach technical books is to treat it not like a novel. It's not a novel. Uh, obviously, me and Vini, we wrote parts of the different chapters. So uh, like nobody dies in the end. There is no plot. There is no plot twists. There, is no, there are no cliffhangers. So there's no uh, plot twist. How can there um, not be concerned? Yeah, the, the, plot, the plot twist. Wait, the plot, you the plot didn't twist. make this like a choose your own adventure. There isn't like a mystery no, to no, solve no, no, no. at the end. Choose your own adventure. Is there like you gotta dis- decide who you want to be an administrator or a developer and you start your path, right? Uh, but really, no, how I like to approach technical books and how I guess I saw people approaching this book is to treat it as like, uh, obviously, do go ahead and read the chapters uh, that are interesting to you or just the first chapters, but then probably just try to come back to other chapters. For instance, the chapter on backups. Maybe you don't need to configure MySQL backups right now, right? But you can always come back later, open the book, or like, uh, however you have it digitally on, on paper, and look it up and read it or refresh it. So use it more like a source of information that you can just come back to and read the top. So, um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's ask some technical questions, right? So we've talked a little bit about the process of writing a book, um, you know, and, and I think that that's good context because, you know, some people do want, you know, that's, that's one of their goals. You know, Vinny, you said you wanted this as something, you know, for, for your long-term, you know, kind of career, you can look back and you can say, I accomplished that. I wrote a book, I'm published. But um, for those who are reading the book, for those who are, you know, getting, you know, involved in MySQL, I think that a couple questions come up. Number one, there's so many options. Why should people choose MySQL to begin with? Right? So if you've got all these options, you're a developer, you're starting out, um, why choose MySQL? Okay, uh, uh, I would say by me, why I chose to work with MySQL at first instance is it's one of the most popular open source database. So when I was starting my career, I didn't have a plenty of options to work with like Oracle, SQL Server, whatever. So the market was bigger for MySQL. That was my my first decision. And nowadays, MySQL is still the database that is being most used by developers. If we look at the DB ranking, it's the first one open source by a far margin from the second one. So I think um, that's the point. Like for someone that is starting his career, his or her career uh, is thinking about like uh, how can I insert myself in the market in the future? Like, and the book uh, I think was focused. Uh, I I try to do this on the book. 
Okay. No, um, my Sergey, perspective. Is, 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 why would you suggest people start with MySQL? Uh, first of all, why not? And second, my perspective was kind of channeling my experience is that some people do stumble into technologies accidentally, right? It does happen. Mm, you enter, true. you enter the workforce, you enter the our industry, you get a job. Maybe you are a developer, maybe you are. I don't know, an IT administrator or something. And there is a database and you start using it. And uh, it is, it just happens to be MySQL maybe or PostgreSQL or even Oracle. Like I, to be honest, I almost accidentally became who I am right now because I decided to go and become an Oracle DBA almost by accident. And, uh, but it could have happened any other way. But yeah, a lot of people, I think, do not go and just think like which database I want to learn. First of all, universities uh, usually provide courses that are based around specific databases, right? Sometimes. And then you go, you get your first job and that job might already have, you know, some infrastructure, some databases. And what I wanted to give in this book is like, okay, uh, it maybe doesn't give you an answer of why would you pick MySQL, but if MySQL is what is there, or what's picked, or what you decided to use, then here is how you will use it, How here is what it can do for you. Yeah, and Sergey, that's a very good point that you make, is, you know, in, in combining kind of any what you said and Sergey, you know, MySQL does have a large amount of popularity, uh, there are a lot of third-party applications that have chosen it as their basis for their database, right? So if you install, you know, Drupal, you know, WordPress, you know, you have certain options you can use, but typically it is geared towards that MySQL or in many cases, MariaDB. And it becomes popular because it is kind of that de facto standard. Yep. And because it does have a wide install base, a lot of times when you're starting a new job, maybe you're coming out of university, it might be a database that is the first database you get your hands on. And, uh, you know, so it's it's oftentimes not just about choosing, it's about what has chosen you <laughs> based on the, the technology and the applications. So let's assume that, you know, you, you, you have this MySQL database, you're starting out, you're getting started. What's the, what's the number one thing that, People starting out mess up. What's the one thing that they kind of like forget? Like if you could point them to any one of the chapters in the book and say, you really need to read this one or you really need to do this, which one would you say is the most powerful? Uh, I would divide into two categories. The ones that okay. doesn't know my sequel. So I would say chapter one, uh, I already saw people struggling a lot with wrong uh, RPM packages, or I'm trying to install a Debian package on CentOS because I don't know Linux. So these kind of basic mistakes at Linux level, uh, I would say start with chapter one. Uh, for, okay. for those who already have certain experience uh, and they are trying to take an, uh, the next step, is all about like Sergey wrote a great chapter about monitoring, about backups, and, uh, and these are the things that when your database is on production, you need to worry about, like because uh, things are good when they are running good, but when they go down, it's when the DBA needs to shine, and I think these are two important chapters. Okay. Sergey, what about for you? What's that one thing that you think people should pay attention to? Like the number one mistake that, you know, folks make who are starting out? Uh, I guess I would like to break it up into pieces again. Um, for folks who are uh, starting up designing a database, right? Uh, or thinking about how to evolve their schema or how to write an efficient schema, then maybe look at the first half of our book, right? So this will definitely give you an overview on best practices and how to better approach MySQL, how to better uh, work with MySQL, how to understand types and which ones to pick and what uh, what not. So um, improperly designed schemas, you know, over-index databases and all that stuff. But I guess we talked about that sometimes already with you, Matt. But yeah, it's a common, it's a common thing. Uh, but 
if, for instance, you stumbled upon a database that is already has a schema and is already populated and is already running, then the one thing that you probably should try to pay attention to is, yeah, a second here, we uh, try to look at how to monitor your database and understand that it's fine. And yeah, backing up and making sure that it's restorable is also a really, really good side of things. It's it's quite far in the book, yeah. to be honest, right? Because you have to build up to it. Uh, there is so much involved into just, you know, if we started structuring our uh, book by giving out the things that are most important, we would be like installation, <laughs> monitoring, uh, installation, backing up and monitoring, I guess, would be the first three chapters. And everything else would be like next ones, the more advanced stuff. But really, you have to uh, put up knowledge on top of the other knowledge. So uh, do definitely look at monitoring, do definitely look at backups and recovery, because that will eventually bite you. Like any database will crash. And on an infinite time scale, any database will corrupt, and you will lose the data there unless you have backups. And any database will also get stuck <laughs> with bad performance. So. Uh, that is really important. But uh, I would really also recommend just assessing and trying to understand where are you with understanding MySQL and not picking up anything in particular, but uh, trying to do a holistic approach. And just if you are reading the backups chapter and there is something there that is unclear, maybe other chapters will help you understand that. Right, so per capita, there is also a good chapter on locking and transactions, and you probably should read that before understanding parts of the monitoring chapter because monitoring chapter and it builds up on that because you cannot understand parts of what are we looking at within MySQL if you don't know how it locks things. Right, so so I was looking at the chapters, and I noticed that. You all had included a chapter on optimizing your database costs in the cloud. Why? What? That, that seems like an unusual one for a book on MySQL. So I'm curious, what have you seen in that space? And kind of maybe give us an overview of why that's important. Uh, I, I, uh, Sergey will, will, for sure, he has uh, histories about this. Uh, but uh, truth is, Matt, like it's really common. Uh, like we know that everything in the cloud costs money, uh, disk, memory, CPU, whatever. So you need to use it wisely. And as uh, Sergey highlighted, like if you are running bad optimized queries, you are using a lot of your disk, a lot of your memory. Maybe you need to oversize your server because uh, my current instance is not capable of running what I need because it's everything is run is running not optimized. So you are wasting dollars with bigger instances to hold um, to process your data where you could do it better and saving money. Like and I think that's uh, the main idea. And based on support cases, uh, this is very frequent. Uh, ha happens very frequently, like oversize it or uh, optimize it, and uh, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, and Sergey, what, what about from your perspective? I mean, is do, do you echo the same? Yeah, I absolutely second Vinny, and also I am guilty as anybody using cloud of just you know pouring money onto a fire. Like you have something running slow, you can just you know pick a larger instance. You can add some IOPS, you can do stuff. It's cloud, it's elastic, right? Uh, so, uh, but you kind of have to understand that everything has its costs and you don't always need to pay that much or uh, maybe you do, but how do you understand? It's, it's not about that you don't need to pay. There is no magic there that will allow you not to pay. Everything costs like I, I'm um, a big proponent of clouds. I like cloud environments. Like I like the elasticity. I like the uh, the freedom they give you and the ease of use. But they also come at cost, which uh, sometimes can, like you know, be more than you expected. And you got to understand that. Yeah, and um, you know, it's it's interesting. I think that from a cloud perspective. 
This is where I'm interested in the people who are reading and using the book. The the topics you cover are relevant whether you're running in the cloud or outside the cloud. And I think that one of the things that I have seen is from people deploying in the cloud, a lot of times they feel like backups are covered, high availability is covered. If you need optimization, you just add more resources. It, it, there's this comfort level that you've outsourced to the cloud when, in fact, I don't think that's really the case. There still needs to be that design of your database, the you know, ensuring that the backups and the, the restoration is possible and you know what's going on, how you optimize your systems, how you configure it properly. I think that's often overlooked. Yeah, I think fundamentally, even if you're, even if we're talking about a database as a service environment where the backups are really automated and they are hidden kind of under the hood, uh, in the end of the day, it is your data and your responsibility. So understanding, for instance, that you should probably try to restore them every once in a while is a good thing because like what will happen if the backups, if the backup that you really need is not restorable or you don't know how to approach it. Um, the worst thing that happens with so many abstractions built on top of other abstractions is that eventually there will come a day when the abstractions will leak and when you will have to understand, uh, why your MySQL is stuck, right? So, Somebody opened the terminal, which is connected to your database as a service, which has auto tuning, which has everything, this amazing technology. I'm, I really, really like it. Not, not criticizing here, but there are things that happen. Such as you just open a terminal, you connect to a database and you lock everything up. Just you ran a command. Maybe you wanted to run it in your database, like a development environment. And now there is a production which is locked and there is no processing out there. But from the cloud perspective, it's perfect. Like, there is no load. There is no nothing. Nothing is going wrong. So, uh, you got to be prepared for that. So not everything can be automated. Not everything can be, uh, made super robust. So, uh, in the end of the day, I am a firm believer that eventually you will face an issue that will require you to step in and understand what is going on inside. And the more we go, and the more our, in, our industry, I think, goes towards automation and building abstractions, which are good, again, I'm, I'm not criticizing, the uh, better it's going to be for an expert, or for somebody working with the technology to understand what is going on inside of it. Because uh, when, yeah, when bad things happen, somebody will have to step in and, uh, you know, resolve it. Awesome. So um, for those who are watching, and you are interested in a copy of um, Vinny and Sergey's book. Um, what we're going to do is as soon as we hit 100 likes or 100 comments in the YouTube video, we're going to go ahead and give away two copies um, randomly selected from those who post a comment. So um, go ahead, post a comment if you're interested in getting a free copy of the book. Um, we, we appreciate you subscribing and, uh, liking the video. Um, and so Vinny and Sergey, last question for you two, what are you writing next? <laughs> for now, I'm on vacations, Matt, of writing books, but I don't know. Come on. We can write yeah. like a, like a MySQL <laughs> mystery novel or a, or a MongoDB. We could do like the database superhero team. Yeah, that's true. Like it could be like a comic book. Yeah. Well, there, there is, it's not a novel, but there are some Easter eggs there. Uh, that are some uh, names of engineers in some of the chapters. So I think it was kind of a way of thanking those who uh, taught me along the way, like, for example, Marcos, uh, Guli, uh, like, there are names there that are Easter eggs uh, about this. I think it, it's nice. But who knows next? Um, I, I would like personally to write something above uh, learning my SQL, maybe a high performance in my SQL or something like this, because this would help mm. me to leverage my knowledge. So who knows? Maybe. Awesome. Sergey, anything you, you, you've got on your plate to write? To be honest, no. Uh, 
I now have a kid, and so maybe okay. I will write a children's book. <laughs> Who knows? But honestly, uh... <laughs> oh yes, yes, let's write a database book yeah, geared for yeah, children. Yeah, like we can turn learning my scale into a comic book and be a sequel for yeah, toddlers. Sequel for toddlers, right? Exactly. Like you gotta be prepared. Like in the more more in our industry right now, there is so many stuff to know and learn. Like it's 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 amazingly difficult. So you gotta start. You know, like one year old, it's already too old to go into our industry. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but jokes aside, nothing, to be honest. Uh, it's actually, it's not, I wouldn't say that I don't want to write anything anymore, but it definitely takes you some time to decompress because just the sheer amount of time you invest into doing this project, like uh, it took us more than a year to finish it. And it took us, uh, me personally, it took a lot of weekends away and you live constantly for more than a year, you live uh, with this thought in your head that uh, whenever you have time, you probably should write a book or you should be kind of always mindful of allocating time for that and thinking about it. And it's like it lives with you. It is always there. And just having this freedom to, you know, it is Saturday and guess what? I will do nothing. Like Maybe I will read a book that somebody else wrote. So this is really <laughs> exhilarating. Uh, but it's, uh, <laughs> so, so you're going to read. That's what you're no, Actually, yes, I'm you're reading quite a lot read. now, right? Uh, but the whole process is really, really interesting and challenging and rewarding in the end. So I for sure will keep my eyes open on something. And maybe I will eventually write about I don't know, maybe cloud and how to do databases in the cloud properly. Uh, that could be a fun thing to do. Indeed, indeed. So if you haven't, check out the book. It's available on Amazon. It's available on other bookstores. Um, I would encourage you to grab a copy, whether it's Kindle or not. And again, if you'd like a free copy, go ahead and uh, you know subscribe, like this video, and drop a comment down below. Uh, Sergey and Vinny, I appreciate you hanging out. Um, thank you as always, and we will see you on another episode. For sure, Matt. Thanks a lot for being here. Thank you, Matt. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Wow, what a great episode that was. We really appreciate you coming and checking it out. We hope that you love open source as much as we do. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to us on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And of course, tune in to next week's episode. We really appreciate you coming and talking open source with us.